Alright guys, welcome back to the channel and in today's video I'm going to be telling you guys why the SA95 Mustang is the S chassis of America. Let's get into today's video. Alright, so before we get into the technicals, I'm just going to do a little walk around. It's just a 2003 Mustang on some stock wheels. Pretty okay paint job, but the real magic is under the hood. Like I said, the real magic is under the hood, and that's because I have a four valve swap Mustang GT. Yeah, so we're not gonna get into particular about this four valve swap. It's essentially a 96 to 98 Mustang Cobra swap, but I have a Lincoln Mark 8 block, some Marauder heads, Marauder intake. So like I said, there's a bunch of different stuff on it, but it's essentially a four valve swap. But that's not actually what we're here for today. What we're actually here for is why I would consider one of these New Edge or SN95 Mustangs the S chassis of America. The number one reason I'm going to give you is how plentiful these bodies are. This is my first one. I have one that's 5.0 swapped over there. My brother just got this one from me. This is a nice one, needs a little paint job, two valve and that. And then this is my original four valve swap Mustang. No, it's not dead. I'm going to be putting a pretty unique engine in there. And uh, pretty much I got four of these things and I don't think I spent over four to five hundred bucks for any of them. They were all pretty relatively cheap uh, bodies to buy. All right, so now that you guys have seen how many Mustangs I have, the different motor swaps, I have 5.0 in one, two valve in one, four valve in one, and then we're gonna be putting a Chevy in the green one. But essentially, these things are starting to behave just like the S chassis. Let's say the, I'd say the S13 and the S14. The S15 is a little more sought after, a little more expensive, but you can get a 13 or a 14 relatively cheap. I'm not sure how cheap they are nowadays, so this chassis is now becoming one of those things that you can pick up relatively cheap. You can throw on some budget coilovers. You can either do a motor swap or revamp your two valve motor or factory motor. Um, the SN95 came with a 5.0 and two valves. So you can pick them up in any variant. You can pick up a Cobra, you can pick up a two valve motor that's blown up, four valve swap it. These things are just relatively cheap to work on in general. And that's why I believe these are now becoming more of the trend when you wanna buy something and turn it into a drift missile. People are making those S13s and S14s, which we call the S chassis. They're making them a little too nice now, and even the beat up shitbox bodies, they're asking an arm and a leg for them, and it's just becoming more and more unreasonable to get them, and that's why I say, these Mustangs have turned out to be the best replacement, or pretty much the S chassis of America. If you guys only knew how much fun you can have with a $1,500, $2,000 SN95 Mustang, where it comes with a five speed, maybe a welded diff, something cheap to do, and a two valve motor that runs right, doesn't leak any oil, doesn't leak any coolant, you guys would be amazed. So pretty much what people used to do with those S chassis is they used to pick up the S13 or the S14, whether it's the American or Japanese version, I'm not too sure. If you guys are watching from the States, you guys would definitely have more of the left hand version. And those things used to go pretty cheap. People used to get them, put turbo kits on them, do engine swaps, like put LSs in them. And people are now starting to do the exact same thing with the SN95 or the New Edge Mustang. They're buying those things for just shells and putting LSs in them. They're putting four valve motors in them, two valve motors back in them. They're putting 5.0s in them. I, I've seen someone swap in a Jay-Z into one of these things. That's just how cheap these bodies are to get. And um, suspension parts are fairly cheap. There's just, they're just an awesome chassis to work with. Um, they have a um, suspension issue where you're gonna need some subframe connectors that's just to just stop the car from twisting. But once you put those subframe connectors in, these things are so stout, so, so rugged. I've been doing videos with this exact same chassis for at least, I'd say four years consecutively. I've never had a chassis issue with these things. The motor as well, uh, as long as you don't leak any coolant, leak any oil, you are good to go. I never had time and chain failure. And a lot of the people that do have the time and chain failure in these motors were not oiling the motor properly or keeping it cool. So. As long as you keep them cool, you keep them oiled, you are absolutely good to go. Now let's get back to that actual four valve swap that I have out there. I'm gonna show you a few pointers and tricks how to actually get that in your car fairly easy. And that's one of the easiest swaps you can do right now to get a good horsepower bump 
in your SN95. What I really wanted to start with is to show you guys that there is a factory TR3650 behind my four valve swap. You don't need a new gearbox or a new drive shaft or anything like that to get that motor in the car. This is a look of it under the hood. I use the factory two valve harness. You're gonna have to rework the um, coil pack connectors. You're gonna need to swap the polarity on them. That's the only difference between these. You're gonna need to extend the wires for the uh, idle air controller and the TPS. And I think that's all you need to do when extending. Now, if you get the MMR um, crossover pipe delete kit that comes with the four valve motors, you're gonna need to extend your temperature sensor as well. And that is super easy to do. That's literally all I did to get that motor in the car. Everything else is two valve. I have two valve transmission, clutch, pressure plate, motor mounts, everything. So this thing is super easy to swap into the car. I guess essentially you guys can call me a freaking Mustang fanboy, but these bodies have been the cheapest thing for me to get into for absolute years now. That's why I have so many of them. This one is running, that one is running, and the 5.0 is running. As you can see, there's nothing in this one, but we're doing a complete carbureted 5.7 Chevy swap into this one. So I absolutely love these things, man. I have no issues with them. Very cheap to pick up. And you know what's the, the weirdest part? I'm not actually even in America. I live in the Bahamas and these things are cheap to pick up. So I know in the States, if you're in the United States or anywhere that uses these vehicles or where they build them, it's gonna be much cheaper there as well. All right, so that's pretty much all the points I have why I think that these SN95s are in their prime to be bought, to be swapped, to be either cut apart or kept pristine. It's pretty much up to you guys. But if you want something that you can take to the drag strip or take to the drift track, or do some time attack, there's no better body that's more affordable than the SN95. The two valve platform, the four valve platform, and the 5.0 platform are all great motors to start with, and they don't take a million dollars to get up, running, and in very, very good performing condition for very little cash. So that's pretty much why I'm absolutely in love with these things. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Always remember, don't drift without your dreams, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.